In this video, we will be learning how to build a flooded spawn, which is also sometimes referred to as a hydra, here in Oxygen Not Included. This build features fully automated pressure control, a compact design that is among the easiest to set up, and an optional infinite gas storage mode that can be toggled on and off. By following this guide, you will learn how to create this spawn variation so you can provide your colonies with a steady supply of oxygen. Whether you're a beginner looking to build your first hydra or an experienced player seeking new designs and fresh ideas, this tutorial is for you. Let's start by covering a few basics. For those who may be new to oxygen generation, a SPOM or self-powered oxygen machine is the name for a commonly built player structure that converts water into oxygen and hydrogen via the electrolyzer. It is able to power itself by burning the hydrogen it produces in hydrogen generators to produce the electricity it needs to operate. Once built, these machines are fully capable of sustaining operation with the only constant external input requirement being water. When designed efficiently, these machines tend to produce more hydrogen than they need for operation, meaning that the excess can be used in other applications, such as additional power generation for other systems. Now, there are a couple important numbers that we need to consider when building a SPOM. The first is the water usage of each electrolyzer. Each electrolyzer is capable of consuming 1,000 grams per second or 1 kilogram per second of water when operating at full capacity. This shouldn't be too much of a problem unless you plan on building an absolute monstrosity of a SPOM as each liquid pump and pipe can move up to 10 kilograms of liquid per second. A single pump and or pipe is capable of supplying up to 10 electrolyzers, so if you are building something with more than 10 for some ungodly reason, then you will need more than one of each. The real limiting factor on scale here is having enough renewable water to keep a larger machine operating. Anyways, when it is running at capacity, an electrolyzer will produce 888 grams per second of oxygen and 112 grams per second of hydrogen. These numbers are important because they determine the configuration and quantity of gas pumps needed to handle the two gases at maximum capacity. You see, each gas pump can move 500 grams per second, and each gas pipe can transport up to 1,000 grams per second. This means that a SPOM will need roughly two oxygen gas pumps for each electrolyzer and one gas pipe for every two gas pumps. Since the hydrogen is produced at a much lower rate, each hydrogen gas pump can support up to four electrolyzers. Okay. Now we know a couple of important numbers and a little about SPOM theory. Let's discuss how we can build upon this foundation to create a hydra. Just a side note here to prevent any confusion, I may use the terms flooded SPOM and hydra interchangeably throughout this guide. The Hydra is a spawn variation that takes advantage of several key game mechanics. The first capitalizes on how electrolyzers behave when partially flooded. Normally when an electrolyzer has liquid in its tiles, it becomes flooded and will not operate. Flooding is indicated by these squiggly lines. But if we put just a tiny amount of liquid, say 100 kilograms in each tile, the building is effectively flooded, but it will still operate. This is what I mean by partially flooded, and it leads to some interesting behavior. When an electrolyzer is flooded in this manner, it will still produce hydrogen and oxygen at its top left tile. When this happens, the gas must go somewhere since the liquid wants to return to the tile. This leads us to the second game mechanic we will use to our advantage, and that is how gas is separated through a liquid medium. When the electrolyzer produces gas in its output tile, the game will check the neighboring tiles for one that is empty to move it to, or one that contains the same gas that it can combine it with. This is because two different gases cannot occupy the same tile, but can be combined if they are the same. Another feature of the flooded SPOM is that the electrolyzers can no longer become overpressure when partially flooded. Normally, an electrolyzer will become overpressured and stop operating once gas pressure in its output tile reaches 2 kilograms. However, this never happens in a flooded SPOM because the tile contains a small amount of liquid. When the electrolyzer produces the gas, it is immediately moved to a nearby tile, and since there is no gas pressure and not enough liquid to prohibit operation, the electrolyzer will never overpressure. Using this knowledge to our advantage, we can create two separate chambers that neighbor the electrolyzer output tile and prime one with oxygen and the other with with hydrogen so we can control how the gases separate. This also gives us the added benefit of creating two infinite gas storage chambers as tiles do not break under any gas pressure no matter how high and flooded electrolyzers and vents can continue to add gas into them since they can never become overpressured. Now I realize this may seem like a huge exploit and it may turn some people off from building a hydra but to that I say even before you start that was a preemptive shh. just know I have a whole bag of shh with your name on it. Seriously though I would argue that the high pressure vent is capable of pumping up to 20 kilograms 
milligrams of gas into a tile without any exploits. And if anything above that makes you uncomfortable, I recommend you stick around and see the control features we will add to address this concern. So now that we know what a SPOM is and how the flooded SPOM works, let's cover what technologies we will need to unlock in the research tree in order to build one. We can start with everything up to improved ventilation and HVAC in the gases section, low resistance conductors and sound amplifiers in power, advanced automation in computers, and air systems in liquids for the electrolyzers themselves. All right, now we have all the required technology to build a Hydra and a basic understanding of how one operates. Let's put all this theory, math, and numbers to good use by constructing a basic Hydra. In this guide, we're gonna recreate this Hydra. It features two electrolyzers that consume up to two kilograms per second of water to produce up to 1,776 grams of oxygen per second and 224 grams of hydrogen per second. I recommend this one because it's compact, easy to set up, and if each duplicate in our colony consumes 100 grams per second of oxygen, that is assuming that none of them have the mouth breather trait, it can support up to 17 duplicates. Of course, you can always scale this design up or down depending on your colony's oxygen needs. For those looking for something a little bit beefier, I'll include the overlays for a larger variation towards the end of the guide. For now though, we'll start with an area that is 12 tiles wide and 12 tiles tall. This is the basic shape for our Hydra. We want to use insulated tiles here to prevent the heat generated by the machinery inside from leaking out into the surrounding area. Next, we can add an electrolyzer at the bottom. Ideally, this should be made out of gold amalgam since the interior can reach around 75 degrees once it has been operating for a while. If we make this out of copper, there is a good chance the electrolyzer will overheat, causing it to break. And since this chamber will be sealed off, it will make any repair attempts tricky at best. Let's go ahead and add a regular tile above the electrolyzer. We can go ahead and add insulated pipe vertically connecting this electrolyzer to the position where the second one will be above it and also extending downward out the bottom like so. This will be our water input to the electrolyzer. Let's also add five gas pumps in these locations. Note that these should also be made out of gold amalgam for overheat protection. Next, add gas vents at the bottom corners and connect everything with gas pipe. Add a gas bridge pointing upward across the top right gas pump. We can add airflow tiles and then three bottle emptiers at the following positions. Check sweep only and water on the bottom two emptiers. We need a total delivery to each of the bottom two emptiers of less than 3.98 kilograms in order to partially flood the gas vents. When complete, each of the two tiles at the bottom of both chambers should have less than two kilograms of liquid in them. This is because any more will completely flood the vents. I'm not sure if this is a bug or an intended feature, but I did quite a bit of testing and I found this amount of liquid to work well at fast speed while adding gas through the vents. Note I did not test this with faster modded speeds. You can obtain liquids in such small amounts by spilling water onto a floor eight or so tiles wide with a runoff at the other end and have a duplicate mop it up. You can then sweep these bottles to the emptiers in the hydro one by one until you get an amount within range. Note, you can skip flooding these vents completely if you don't intend on ever using them to do anything more than prime the chambers. The purpose of flooding these vents is to provide the option for adding gases from external sources later on at pressures above two kilograms. As that is the maximum pressure, a regular vent can push gas into a room before overpressuring. Once this is complete, we can deconstruct the bottom emptiers and sweep the material out of the enclosure. Now we need to build everything inside the lower chambers before we can seal them up. To do this, we will pre-wire the automation and power circuits before flooding the electrolyzers. Let's start by adding conductive wire to connect everything to power. Next, let's add all of our automation control devices, namely four Atmos sensors, two buffer gates, two NOT gates, and an AND gate. Now connect them with automation wire like so. If you're wondering about how these circuits operate, we will review them and the Hydra as a whole toward the end of the guide. Now that everything inside the lower chambers is built, we can begin closing them off and flooding the electrolyzer. We can start by adding airflow tiles at these locations. We can also go ahead and seal off the bottom left chamber with insulated tiles. Set the remaining bottle emptier to polluted water or any other liquid you may have besides regular water and enable auto bottling. And yes, 
You can even use germ-filled polluted water from your bathrooms, as the flooding liquid will not spread germs into the gas produced by the electrolyzers during operation. Be sure to turn off auto bottling after one delivery is made and repeat this process one more time, except this time set the bottle emptier to regular water. Once the second delivery is made, disable auto bottling and check that all the electrolyzer tiles contain a small amount of liquid. The bottom two should have around 100 kilograms of polluted water or whatever liquid you ended up using in each tile and the top two should have around 100 kilograms of water. You will know you got this right if all four tiles contain liquid and the electrolyzer is not displaying the flooded icon mentioned earlier. Seal off the electrolyzer with an airflow tile and add another electrolyzer on top of it. Flood the second electrolyzer exactly like we did the first. After you're done, seal it off with one airflow tile at the top right and fill the rest in with insulated tiles. We can now deconstruct the last bottle emptier and sweep the room. Finish the top room by adding two hydrogen generators and a smart battery, all made from gold. Be sure to connect them with automation wire and set the smart battery to 95 high threshold and 65 low threshold. This will allow the generators to turn on when the smart battery drops below 60% charge and turn off if it is above 95% charge. The smart battery control circuit greatly increases hydrogen and power use efficiency by only consuming hydrogen when it is actually needed. And now for everyone's favorite part of the build. Oh, did I say favorite? I meant least favorite. Priming the two gas chambers. I used to hate this part. No, sir, I don't like it. And it is the main reason why I have avoided building a Hydra in the past, but this design has taken that into account and has, in my opinion, made the process much easier. You will see here in a moment. Let's begin by giving this thing a jump start. We can do that by adding a few manual generators up top and connecting it to the power circuit. If you have an alternative power source like a coal generator or an external circuit, you can use that instead. While the battery is being charged, we can add gas vents to the three output pipes so both chambers can begin to be vacuumed out. Now this is a good time to go ahead and start adjusting Atmo sensor settings. Set the outside sensors that are connected to the buffer gates to below 5,000 grams. This should get the gas pumps going and ultimately accomplish the vacuuming process. We can also set the inside Atmo sensors that are connected to the NOT gates to above 20,000 grams. This will prevent any gas from being added from the electrolyzer or the flooded vents once 20 kilograms of pressure has been reached in each chamber. If you recall, 20 kilograms is the maximum amount of gas pressure a high pressure vent would normally be capable of putting into a room. Once the two chambers are fully vacuumed out, the pump should stop running. If you're not sure if the rooms are vacuumed out, you can easily check by selecting gas on the materials overlay tab at the top right. Tiles should be gray and indicate vacuum when selected. Now that the chambers are empty, switch the two outside Atmo sensors that are connected to the buffer gates to above 5,000 grams. This will prevent the pumps from operating below 5 kilograms of pressure, eliminating the risk that the chamber could accidentally lose prime during normal operation. At this point, all of the Atmo sensor dials should be red. Alright, we're in the home stretch. The short rows as they say in farming. This is by far the hardest part in my opinion, but don't worry, it's really not that difficult. All we need to do is prime the left chamber with oxygen and the right with hydrogen. I like to do this with additional electrolyzers and a temporary setup, but feel free to do this however you like. In my method, I build a small room with two electrolyzers and a single gas pump connected to two gas filters. You can use the gas pipe element sensor controlling a shutoff valve or the actual gas filter, though the latter is more reliable but draws more power. The idea here is to put at least one to two kilograms of pressure into each chamber before connecting the electrolyzers inside the hydra to a water source. This will ensure proper gas separation upon starting the machine. You may be able to get away with less priming, but I highly recommend saving before starting up the electrolyzers either way, just in case something goes wrong. That way you can reload and try again without much headache. Okay, now that the chambers have been primed, it's time to connect the hydrogen generators to the bridge we added earlier. I like to snake the generator connection pipe through the power room to create a good amount of reserve hydrogen just in case the oxygen chamber backs up, preventing the electrolyzers from running for an extended period of time. If this happens, and it should be very unlikely if you are using the oxygen, the smart battery will leak a small amount of power over time, causing the generators to run if the machine is at idle for many cycles. This reserve should be more more than enough to handle this scenario. I used radiant gas pipes here in an attempt to transfer some of the heat out of the hydrogen before it is fed to the generators, which is meant to help keep them from overheating, but you may very well be able to get away with regular pipes. Last but not least, 
connect the electrolyzers to a water source. Let's go ahead and deconstruct this vent that we have on the hydrogen line, just in case we actually get this chamber full and it starts pumping it out into the surrounding area. Let the hydro run until the pipe to the hydrogen generators starts to fill. And at this point, the hydro should be operating on its own power. Feel free to disconnect it from any outside power source and close up the power room with insulated tiles to prevent any heat from leaking out. At this point, we can use the oxygen for our base or whatever else you want to do with it. Just be sure to cool it somehow before piping it into your living areas as it can get fairly hot as the machine continues to run. One of the easiest ways to do this is to pipe the oxygen through radiant gas pipes that are submerged in a decent sized pool of water. You can also use the extra hydrogen for other generators or machines. You can do that by connecting to the gas pipe coming out of the right side. Let's take a moment to review the operation. Water is pumped into the electrolyzer from an outside source where it is converted into hydrogen and oxygen gas. These gases are produced at the top left tile of each electrolyzer. Since the electrolyzers are partially flooded, this forces the gases into adjacent tiles. However, this is controlled due to the fact that each chamber is primed and gases only combined with the same type. And since the electrolyzers can never overpressure, we have added the inner atmo sensors to limit the total pressure allowed in each chamber. If the oxygen chamber pressure is not above 20 kilograms, the flooded vent will allow more gas in from an outside source. If the hydrogen chamber pressure is not above 20 kilograms, the flooded vent will allow more gas in from an outside source. If both chamber pressures are below 20 kilograms, then the electrolyzers will be permitted to operate. These two automation circuits are meant to keep both chambers from exceeding 20 kilograms of pressure at any time. If these pressures are met, the entire machine will essentially enter sleep mode until pressure drops below them. If either gas is being used faster than it is produced, the outer Atmo sensor will prevent the gas pumps from reducing their respective pressures to just below 5 kilograms. The buffer gates connected to these sensors allow their pumps to run for a default of 5 seconds after crossing below the 5 kilogram target. This is a personal preference and is intended to reduce the frequency at which the pumps cycle on and off. Another feature of this design is that it can easily be switched into infinite gas storage mode by setting the inner Atmo sensors to below zero. Just a note that doing so will cause the electrolyzers to run at maximum capacity indefinitely or at least until they run out of water. You can have your cake and eat it too in this mode by adding a liquid valve to the water supply pipe and setting it to a desired consumption rate. Doing so will control how much water the electrolyzers are able to consume per second and consequently the rate at which hydrogen and oxygen are produced. This will effectively govern the water consumption and gas production while still allowing the infinite storage of gas. We can calculate the water consumption rate for any target oxygen generation value with the following formula. Water consumption rate equals target oxygen generation in grams per second times 1000 grams per second of water divided by 888 grams per second of oxygen. This will give us our water consumption rate in grams per second. I recommend adding a little margin to whatever value you calculate unless you are really hard up for water as whatever surplus it generates will be stored for emergency use later. Enter this calculated number into the valve and allow a duplicate to adjust it for it to take effect. Now I've tested this design a fair bit and the only way I found to break it is by adding the incorrect gas from an external source via the flooded vents. I believe that as long as you're careful about what you put into it, you shouldn't ever have any problems with it. I have also found that the hydrogen production can outpace the power needs of all four oxygen pumps running flat out. I performed this test by starting with 20 kilograms per towel of oxygen and 4.6 kilograms per towel of hydrogen after letting the machine sleep for over 20 cycles. All right, enough talk, here are the overlays. And as promised, here are the overlays for a larger version of the Hydra. And that's it. Congratulations. You're now a Hydra certified engineer. Want to learn more about oxygen not included? Watch this playlist next. I encourage you to see if you can improve this design or even break it. In fact, I'd love to hear about it if you do. Let me know what you came up with or how you went about breaking it in the comments below. And while you're down there, go ahead and smash that like button until it breaks. I hope you enjoy this video and possibly learn something new along the way. Until next time, friends. Peace.